and here we are live as a very live thing on Wednesday night it's the 1st of May hooray hooray the 1st of May because outdoor nookie starts today unless you're up here it's way too cold it's just not a good idea at all as you can see I'm joined in the studio tonight by as usual over my right hand shoulder right hand shoulder over my right shoulder the glorious and and ineffably effervescent loveliness which is why do you laugh why do you laugh <laughs> tell me why you laugh oh you couldn't be further from the truth the, <laughs> the gloriously ebullient effervescent loveliness that is sav and to her right in the in the 32 inch monitor for it is he it is our sponsor who's got some exciting stuff happening this week it's the one and only darren burns from service six good evening does good evening dave How good you, evening everybody are you all excited I am. I am. Good, good. We'll be talking about that in a little while. It's going to be a show of three halves tonight, people. I want to talk to Daz about what's going on UK side. In the second half, I want to talk about the EU and things that's going on there. And I've got a little task for you, a little tasklet. This will be good. And in the third half, we're going to try and do what Dave Kitson was doing for us before, but without Dave. This is going to be interesting. If it works, it'll be brilliant. If it works, what you will need to do is to Skype to VT Talk 2. It's there on screen now. Skype to VT Talk 2. Um, just send a message and I'll pick them up in the order I get them. It'll be voice only, but if you do come in in camera, I might bring you in on that as well. We'll see. Um, I won't have time for any set up -y stuff or anything like that. It'll just all happen. But that's not going to happen until we've run the title. So, welcome to VT Talk. And we are back in the room um, and and I'm actually a relatively happy bunny today. Not massively happy, but relatively happy because there's all kinds of documentation flitting about and we've had a little bit of good news, which Sav and I will have a little bit natter about in the middle because not everything's as gloomy as you think. Um, but Daz, Safer Sigs Daz, Friday. You have a visitor coming to your premises, do you not? I do indeed. I've... Um... <coughs> Excuse me, I have my local MP, Bob Walters, coming. And he's bringing um, his little his entourage along with him. And he's going to come and sit and talk to me and talk to some of my customers about the um, proposed tobacco products directive. And um, my customers are hopefully going to give him some good feedback on why they've changed to e-cigs. And he's going to go away a little bit more educated than when he's going to arrive. I think that's fabulous. I think it's fabulous that he's coming down there. Um... I presume you've got an open door policy, so if anybody's within kind of a 120 mile radius that can uh, hurtle on down to share safer cigs and... Uh... Anybody and everybody is absolutely welcome, the more the merrier to be honest, because I, I, want, I want them to see um, the difference that e-cigs make to people and I want them to talk to as many different people as possible so they can all give them their stories because everybody's unique, everybody's different. And I want, I want him to be able to engage with everybody and anybody who walks in through the doors about their stories. And um, hopefully it's going to hit home with them quite, quite a lot. Excellent. You've, you've already had some press, local cover, uh, coverage in the local press, haven't you? We have, we have. And um, we've, we've got the, the press turning up again on, on Friday. Um, and the message is, is, is starting to get out and it's going to get out even further now because I think um, because... This MP is coming, and, and he's his department's done a press release prior to his him coming to me. It means the local media take more notice, and they're they're going to turn up, which means the the story about of electronic cigarettes for a start is is going to get out to a wider audience. But more importantly, the the backing for for the tobacco products directive is going to get we're going to get more people backing us purely on the basis that more people are going to be reading about this. Yes, I mean, that, that is the big thing, of course, that, that people, generally speaking, 
even though they may think they know what an e-cig is, I would think that the majority of people out there that don't already use e-cigs haven't got the first clue what an e-cig is. Well, I th this is when when he comes, I'm going to show him the lucky likeies. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to fully explain to him lucky likeies, uh, as you say, are a proof of concept, but. For the average smoker, a lookalike is it, never going to be adequate, and it's never going to be ad adequate for, for the reasons that we all know. And I'm going to explain to them that the average e-cig user does not use an electronic cigarette that actually looks like a cigarette because they just don't work. The, 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 the batteries aren't powerful enough. You can't get enough juice in, in them to sustain them for a day. So a lot of these MPs, they're under the impression that um, we're all using these um, electronic cigarettes that look like cigarettes. And that's why pubs and clubs and bars and restaurants and that are all trying to trying to ban them. People need to realise that um, electronic cigarettes cover a, a wide spectrum, not just ones that look like a cigarette. It, well, yes. I mean, anybody that was that's watching this programme, even if you're watching for the first time, you'll see four arranged along the front of my desk here. And, and patently, if they look anything like a cigarette to you, you really should have gone to Specsavers. <laughs> There's no two ways of it. Other opti opticians also exist. But the stuff I use, none of it. I, I don't think I've got anything that is in regular use that actually looks like a fag or could be mistaken for a fag. And that even comes down to the Ishisha pens that you sent me up does. Because the pretty colours and everything that's on them, you couldn't mistake them for a fag. They look, you'd have to be, you would have to be needing a guide dog, really, to mistake anything of the kind of stuff that the majority of, shall we say, the community users for, a, for a, an ordinary cigarette? Well, I'd, I'd like Bob to, to go back into London and engage Parliament and, and stand up there and say, you know, he's, he, he's been to uh, the electronic cigarettes outlet, he's spoken to the general public, the users of these products, and the information that he's gained and the facts that he's gained are that the, the, the lookalikes nobody uses. And he's, I'm hoping then he's going to give the reasons why the majority of e-cig users don't use those those type of things. Uh, they use ones which look completely nothing like a cigarette. Indeed, indeed. And and to a large degree, that's probably the case. Now, does the camera is on you for the time being because, yet again, the software has decided... Well, the iPad has decided that it doesn't want to see my router for some reason. I've got to get a wired solution to this. It's ridiculous. Um, right, let's let's see if we can get back to source one, can we? Cut? No. Oh, this is all good. Well, I've got a couple of questions, um, if you want them. Go with it, go with it. The first question came in from Lord Barby, and he's asking, what party is the um, guy that's coming down? What party does he represent? He represents the Conservative Party. Right. And the second question came in from Vaporman, and he said, is someone going to film the visit? It is going to be filmed, yes. Um, it's it, it's get it's getting covered uh, by v, VTTV. It will be it will be filmed. Yes, I believe um, I believe Mr. Sutton's sending a, a film crew across, and, and you might have gathered that I've managed to get the the iPad working again now. I believe there's a film crew coming across, but you, you're going to have a camera out yourself, are you not, Daz? Yeah, I'll, I'm going to have um, a young lad that works with Josh. He's going to uh, he's going to be handling a, a little video camera for me as well. Good, good. Um, anything else coming in from, from chat, Sav? No, that's it for the minute from chat. OK, thanks, chat. You could have asked a few more questions and just given me a chance to get this software <laughs> working properly. They like to see you suffer. Well, th that's fine. That's fine. I have no problem with that because I'm going to make them suffer later. Um, but if anybody is in the Dorset area on, on Friday, he's arriving at 2 o'clock, so if anybody's in the Dorset area and they, they're able to drop in, come in, come, come down, you know, it is an open door policy. The more the more the merrier. We want to see you down there um, and engage with the MP. You know, it's not often we get um, the opportunity to have an MP stood right in front of us, willing to listen to what we're going to say. So, um, if, you, if, you, if you've got the opportunity to come down, then please do. I would I would echo that one hundred percent. If you if you <coughs> think, I mean, I, I checked out on Google whatever it is that gives you directions as much as you can believe, and it's a seven and a half hour drive for me. Uh, otherwise I would have been there but he's arriving around about 2 I would need to be there about 12 and with the best will in the world I'm really not at my best when I've woken up at 5 in the morning otherwise I would have been down there like a shot but if, if you're within striking distance you've got good coffee haven't you Daz? 
Oh, we have very good coffee. Very good coffee. See, I know Daz needs coffee. He likes good coffee. So there's going to be good coffee. Take your own biscuits, mate, because I dare bet all of his will be custard creams. <laughs> <laughs> Given that you've eaten all this stuff. You see what I did? Never mind. Um, yeah, but I, I would, I would, I really would love to see two or three hundred people turn up. I think that would be marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. And, you, you know, go on and, and talk to the guy because it sounds as though he's actually seeking the proper information. He's not alone. I, I've, I've noticed that, that there's a fair few Euro people, uh, English Euro people, are actually kind of doing the right thing. He said, switching to camera three. Oh no, I hate this switching to camera three. You may have seen this, I don't know whether you've seen it does. Um, this was in the Wirral Globe, which I believe is your part of the world originally, isn't it, the Wirral? The Wirral? Good God, no, I wasn't a woolly back. <laughs> okay, what were you? <laughs> Liverpoolian? I come from the God, God city itself, Liverpool. Oh right, so that's not in the Wirral, is it not? No. You know, I'm just no. asking the questions because, you know, I mean, if I was on Pointless and there was a geography question came up, we'd get an out. Right, let's go back to this. So this is not to be read then in a, um, a Liverpoolian accent. But Wirral Euro MPs fears e-cigs could put ex-smokers back in habit. Now, when this came up on the Twitter, when it came up on the Twitter, my immediate reaction was... <laughs> <laughs> insert asterisks here I thought you absolute anyway I went and had a look because I never retweet anything without I've read it and it says and I quote a Wirral Euro MP believes thousands of ex-smokers could find themselves back in the habit if the latest proposals from the European Commission are approved electronic inhalers commonly known as personal vaporizers or e-cigs are increasingly popular among people who have been unable to kick the habit using other techniques. I think this report has been talking to somebody because there's no way on the face of the planet does a, a, a paper pay, pay pick up on the PV thing. Very rarely used where they're talking about it. Now, the EU Commission proposes to limit the amount of nicotine in solutions sold for use in electronic cigarettes to four milligrams of nicotine per milliliter, unless the products have been classified for medicinal use. Wirral-based Conservative MEP Jacqueline Foster said, I believe this would result in the solution being too weak for people trying to give up smoking or would require manufacturers to apply for a costly licence to produce medicinal products. She's been listening. So-called e-cigs offer concentrated nicotine to addicts without the 4,000 toxins and carcinogens found in tobacco smoke and removes the risk posed to non-smokers. Not least children of smokers by second-hand smoke. Is, it, is everybody in chat cheering at this point in time, Zav? Because we ought to We're be. getting a few, yes. For many people, traditional nicotine replacement therapies offered by the NHS and the pharmaceutical industry have had very limited success in helping sw smokers quit permanently. This briefing's been brilliant. I'm really worried that e-cig users in Wirral are likely to return to smoking if the proposal to limit nicotine concentrations to four milligrams per milliliter goes ahead. I'm going to read that again. I'm really worried that e-cig users in Wirral are likely to return to smoking if the proposal to limit nicotine concentrations to four milligrams per milliliter goes ahead. Many of the new shops that have opened to meet the growing demand for e-cigs could see their businesses literally go up in smoke if this plan is approved. I will continue to resist interference and unnecessary meddling in people's lives when so many of my constituents are doing their best to kick the habit. Is that or is that not brilliant? What do you reckon, Daz? What do you make of that? <coughs> That's, that's, that's an MAP, MAP who uh, definitely would get my vote without a shadow of a doubt. That's fantastic. Isn't it? Absolutely just, brilliant. I mean, the, even, even the... And I've got to say this, and I'm going to say this out loud. Um, oh, thank you, software. Uh, I'm going to say this out loud. The words that, you, that you're hearing used in there are words that are being tweeted left, right and sentence, centres. There are sentences there that have been going out in tweets and out in emails. These things are working. They're working. 
All of this talking to MEPs and MPs is working, and I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, what really thrills me is the fact that on Friday, when your MP guy comes down, Daz, people are going to be able to stand there and talk to him face to face and tell him this stuff face to face, person to person, real person yep. to demonstrate. So exactly. What, what's, cut, uh, what's chat got to say about all of this? We had an awful lot of woohoos, yes, and well dones. Um, Fuzzy Anna said unnecessary meddling, love it. Yes. Kronos has said music to my <laughs> ears, and Liana Lawless again, love it. Chat, I'm very, very impressed with that article. Well, I think, I honestly do think that we are beginning to win hearts and minds here, and I think we need to be all of us concentrating on our local people. Um, as much as possible. Now, it, it's, um, I'm kind of getting into the EU stuff before the break, but you don't mind, do you, Daz? Not so. Um, so. It's, I was going to call it Industry Week because that's what they used to call this week back in schools. It, it's uh, Constituency Week. It's around about the same sort of thing. Um, and MEPs are, generally speaking, in their constituencies. Now, mine, uh, Martin Callanan, is out in Azerbaijan or wherever it is. He's not here. Um, but I've, I'm trying to schedule a meeting with him. But if they're back in their constituencies, go and see them. Ring them up. Their numbers are online. Ring them up and go and make a meeting to go and see them. And take that, that you print that page out of the Wirral, Wirral, was it? Wirral Globe. Print the page out and take it with you and say, look, this is what one Conservative MEP thinks. This person has done their homework. Why aren't you? Especially if you're local to Glenis Wilmot. That's exactly what you need to be doing. Um, but we're going to build a little bit on that in the second half. And I'm going to make the second half a little bit longer by making this first half a little bit shorter. So we're going to go and take some adverts now. But just a reminder before I do, in the third half, <laughs> in the third half, I'm going to try and do this Skype in thing. So I'll write it down. VT Talk 2. You will need to um, send me a message. I'll call you back. I'm on DND, do not disturb at the minute, so we shouldn't hear anything coming in. Um, but send me a message and I'll try and call you back and try and bring you in. Um, and and we'll, we'll take it from there. So in the meantime, we'll go into a set of ads and when we come back, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Um, Sav's got some information, some stuff I haven't had time to read through, but I know the contents of. And we've got a little bit of a task for you because Mr Sutton's been busy again, um, doing us a hell of a favour. We'll be back right after these messages. in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv
and we're back in the room here on VT Talk on Hooray Hooray the 1st of May because outdoor, well running around with your top coat on starts today really. Um, it's been a queer old week, um, as we, we pointed out last week, uh, on Tuesday of next week, the day before the amendments are due uh, into the Envy Committee on the, product, the Tobacco Products Directive, there is going to be, he said, hoping it all works, a workshop. And this is the poster for it. This is what's happening in the EU, it says. The Policy Department, Economic and Scientific Policy, A, they have different ones, uh, about e-cigarettes on Tuesday, 7th of May, 12.30 to 15.30 in Brussels time. But have a look at that picture there. There's actually not that many looky leggies on it, really. Some Vision E goes there, which actually they look a bit like twists, those batteries, got to be said. Um, the red and... What a, oh, I'm colour blind. What colour are these, Sav? Red, blue and green. Thank you. Red, blue and green, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> With, yes, anyway. Um, this is Ms. Ms. Linda McCavan. How politically correct is that? Um, and apparently participants needing a badge must, must register, providing name, date of birth, nationality, passport or ID number by 3rd of May to all of that place. And uh, apparently, I kind of get in. And uh, apparently, I cannot switch the show. There we are, we're back. Um, I, I'm, I'm apparently not going to be allowed to be there, which is fine. That's all right. Because I've seen who's going. <laughs> Let's have a little run through that little lot as well. And back to camera three. There you are. Organised by the Policy Department, A, Economy and Science, for the Committee on the Environment, Public Health and Food Safety. And they must have wasted gallons of ink on this thing, but never mind. Workshop on electronic cigarettes, in inverted commas. Uh, welcome and opening by Linda McCavan, MP, MEP, sorry, Envy Committee, Rapporteur on Tobacco Products Directive, and then Martin Seychelles, Deputy Director General, Sanco. Don't know who he is, but he's basically going to say where the Commission's at. And then Mr Robert Bertoloni, Chief Scientist and World Health Organisation, representative to the European Union, will present a study on e-cigs. And I've been hunting high and low, and that is not published yet. This is going to be brand new stuff, and I'm not holding out a great deal of hope for that. Because I've read everything else they've done and that's going to be nasty, I think. Then in part two, questions to the European regulators on e-cigs. So Jeremy Mean from the MHRA will be there asking questions of the European regulators. As in, what does this mean for us? Not, as I had originally thought, announcing what they are going to be doing. Although again... Uh, let's just say there's some rumours flying about, but they've come from a very, very reliable source. Germany's going to be doing the same. Finland's going to be doing the same. So these are, these are three countries that apparently are looking to put new regulations together and they're going to be swapping information. Then we come on to the bit that scares the living daylights out of me. Um, the effects of tobacco on respiratory system, long-term effects, focus on e-cigarettes. So Francesco Blassi, who is president of the European Respiratory Society, and I'll switch to camera one for this. I will, yes. Uh, Blassi is about as anti-e-cig as you can get. He's one of the signatories to that piece of crap that was published in uh, the paper that we complained to the Press Complaints Commission about and got it taken down. Um, this guy is he's full of it. Shh. Full of it. That's what he is. Um, and Charlotte Pissinger is, is particularly well named, I think. Um, a senior research fellow at the Research for Centre, Research Centre for Prevention and Health. Prevention and Health, it says here. Prevention of what, I don't know. Could be prevention of health. She, again, and, and Blassi together are pretty much the same. But France, uh, Dr. Jean Francois Etier, Faculty of Medicine at the University of Geneva, has published a book that promotes the use of electronic cigarettes. He is our, our knight in shining armour over there. Um, we've also got the German user group represented, Mr Michael Kleinfeld from, and I've got no chance of pronouncing this, can you, Daz? Because I don't speak German. Inter, oh God, Interessengemeinschaft e Dampfen, the German e-cigarette users association. They're going to be there and they're going to be putting the German user's viewpoint 
there is no representation from the UK users or from French users, Spanish users, Italian users, Greek users. There is no representation from any of us. And what has been suggested from a source in the EU, and the source will remain nameless at this point, is that each individual country, even, might like to write a conjoined letter to the Envy Committee, or to all the members of the Envy Committee, outlining what we think our national stance on it might be. And if they all happen to be the same, well, that's cool too. And they've also suggested that individual emails might be the same. Now, when it comes to sitting down and writing things, I'm not particularly brilliant. Um, so I sat down and recorded some video. Watch this, and then I'm going to ask you to do something with it. Hello. My name's David Dawn and I'm an electronic cigarette user and I want to talk to you today as a member of the European Parliament about e-cigarettes and the upcoming Tobacco Products Directive workshop and amendments and votes and what's going on purely and simply in terms of electronic cigarettes. I need you to know a number of things. One, an electronic cigarette does not perform a medicinal function. E-cig users don't use them to cure themselves of an illness because they don't consider that they have an illness, and indeed, they don't. They do, however, enjoy the benefits of using nicotine. And nicotine, when it's not combined with cigarette smoke, is a relatively harmless drug, as evidenced by the MHRA in the UK, Professor John Britton of the Royal College of Physicians, Dr. Murray Laugerson of Health New Zealand, and a great many other eminent scientists that understand that nicotine, separated from tobacco smoke, is not a dangerous or undesirable substance. I do not use an electronic cigarette that looks like a cigarette in any way, shape or form. Indeed, the electronic cigarette I use, as you can see here, looks nothing whatever like a traditional cigarette. The only similarity that you would see in someone that doesn't know what an e-cigarette is, is that it does look as though I might be blowing out smoke, as I'll demonstrate. And that's how an electronic cigarette actually works. Not only does the user get the nicotine that they desire, but they also get to replicate the hand-to-mouth actions, the inhalation and exhalation of a visible vapour, and that vapour that they exhale poses no problem to any bystanders in any way, shape or form. There is no problem with what you might call second-hand vapour. Martin Dockrell of Action on Smoking and Health in the UK in a recent radio programme said that what e-cigarette use normalises is not smoking, is using a credible and viable alternative to lit tobacco. What I need you to understand is that for between 5 and 7 million people throughout the European Union, electronic cigarettes have proved a viable and credible alternative to smoking tobacco cigarettes. It has enabled them to leave cigarette smoking behind whether that's on a full-time basis or on a part-time basis. Whichever way you care to look at it though, those people are smoking a lot less. And indeed, the figures now show that. If you look at the American market, for instance, which does not have as many electronic cigarette users as the European Union, you will see that Altria, the people behind Philip Morris, Marlborough, has seen a 6.5% decline in the number of cigarettes smoked. And this has been attributed particularly to electronic cigarettes. A 6.5% decline over the course of one year, if you take that over the next 10 years, could mean that 65 to 70% fewer cigarettes would be smoked if electronic cigarettes are allowed to continue with as few restrictions as is possible. What this means is the European Union really needs to look more carefully at electronic cigarettes than has already been done by the Commission in its proposals for revisions to the Tobacco Products Directive. 
it would seem that the European Union, the European Parliament, the Commission and the Council of Ministers has not yet been fully informed of what the potential for electronic cigarette use means over the next 10 to 15 years. It seems sensible, therefore, that you, as an MEP, would back a motion or an amendment to ask the Commission to look further into electronic cigarettes and look further at what it could mean over the next 10 to 15 years if they are allowed to continue unfettered. I also hear about harmonisation, how everywhere in the EU should treat electronic cigarettes the same. To some degree, I would agree with that, but at the moment, the European Union is pretty well harmonised, and it is pretty well harmonised because, no matter what the rules and regulations in each member state are, citizens of that member state are allowed to buy their electronic cigarette supplies, their e-juice, from vendors in other countries and so they can customise their experience to suit what they need in order to avoid smoking cigarettes. And I'd like to cover that in just a small amount more detail. When I say that a customisable experience is what keeps people away from smoking cigarettes, what I mean is pretty much as follows. I like a lot of vapour. I'm not too worried about flavour but I do like quite a lot of nicotine. And because of the way I can set my system up, I have the choice of concentration of nicotine, I have the choice of a myriad of flavours, and I have the choice of how hot or how cool my e-cigarette runs. I can customise the experience to suit myself. You may have heard that medicinal regulation would mean that everyone could have the same experience. The fact of the matter is, Every electronic cigarette user is different. Every electronic cigarette user needs a different experience. They may, for instance, like not too much nicotine, but an awful lot of vapour, and they may like it hot or cooler, or they may like various different flavours. And it is those flavours that prevent them from going back to smoking cigarettes. Because flavouring in electronic cigarettes is not a gateway to youngsters picking these things up and then moving on to tobacco, they are in fact a locked door. They are a barrier to either relapse or entry into smoking tobacco cigarettes. Thank you for listening so far. I don't want to take up any more of your time. I would just beg of you that you either vote to take electronic cigarettes completely out of the Tobacco Products Directive or that you ask the Commission to go away do a lot more research, fund some studies, unbiased studies, and come back in two to three years and report on what the situation is then. At that point in time, you'll have much more information at your fingertips in order to make a decision that is not going to result in potentially 700,000 lives per year being terminated early because you, as an MEP, voted to effectively ban e-cigs as they currently are from the market in Europe. My name's David Dawn. Thank you for your time. Please vote wisely. Now, ooh, that's, that's a video that I've put together purely and simply because I couldn't get to Brussels to present. Wasn't invited, wasn't gonna go. But there's a link about to go into chat even as we speak. And uh, Sav, cat? I'm so sorry, Sav. <coughs> Sav will be saying when she's put it in. I've put it in now. It's in there now. If you go to that page, you will see something that looks awfully like software. You are dead. <laughs> there you go. It looks awfully like that. And as with last weekend's email out, what was that? <laughs> Sorry, that, that was me getting a text message on the, on the phone. I do you, apologize. you will find that there are six links to email that to UK MEPs. It probably needs a little line of explanation at the top, just a line of explanation to say that the UK was not invited to the ESIG workshop on the 7th of May, so please watch these videos and then add your own little message, whichever message you want to add. But... We've had 
um, a little bit of information that, as I say, has come in from contacts in the European Union in Parliament. And what they're saying is that MEPs are likely to be away until Monday at the earliest because it's uh, constituency week. So there's no rush to do this. Get them out, get the links out, get the emails ready to send and send them later rather than sooner, which is it's just not normally what I would say, but send them later rather than sooner. And then by the weekend, we're go also going to have a text document. And this text document, basically, we're going to ask everybody to sign. We're going to put it up on a website, put a comment box underneath it, and you basically tick a box that says, I agree, put your name, and that's pretty much the size of it. And we'll send that one letter to every MEP that we've got an email address for, so that we've got a transcript of what's in the video, and we'll just send that off to every MEP so they've got the written evidence there because we do need, I think, to be able to gain say what the so-called experts that Linda McCavan has invited to this workshop are going to have to say. But we've got a little bit more than that, haven't we, Sav? We we'll have, yes. Because the jury committee has also um, been doing its little bit of work and there's information that's come out of there as well, is there not? There is. Um, and I was given this little bit of information from Leanna Lawless in chat, so I'll read out the bit that she copied out from the 34-page document. <laughs> and it says, Nicotinin... Nicotinin? Nicotinin? Oh, God. Yes, yes, that. Have you gone German all of a sudden? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'll try that again. <laughs> Nicotine-containing products. That's and thing. next to that it says, deleted. And underneath it says, the requirement of authorization of nicotine containing products pursuant to Directive 2001 83 EC could seriously restrict access to products which are less harmful than tobacco products, which can help tobacco consumers to quit. Additionally, additionally the measures proposed cannot be based on Article 114.1 TFEU and therefore lack any legal and that's the important part the lacking of any legal base because the fact of the matter is as I said right at the top of that video e-cigs are not medicines and legally they cannot be classified as medicines and the jury committee is all about the legal side of things and the jury committee has decided that the tobacco products directive should be amended to delete all reference to e-cigs because there's no legal standing for it now that has to go to the Envy Committee because it's an amendment. When it gets there, it'll be voted on. And if you were with us last week when we were going through the voting that goes on, you'll have seen how quick that goes. It's all in favour, against, abstentions, rejected. That's, as, that's it as quick. And if they get to four or five or six or seven or eight amendments that are all substantively identical, which means they say the same thing, they'll go, as he did, uh, we now vote on amendments 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 through 33. Uh, they are all substantively identical, all in favour, against, abstentions, rejected. That's, that's it. If they get to one where they weren't expecting that vote, then you get, I wasn't expecting that, we need to check that electronically. And then they all sit and press their little buttons. But otherwise, it's just show of hands. That's all it is. Now, what will happen is the amendment will go to the Envy Committee. The Envy Committee will discuss it. I can almost certainly guarantee that Glenis Wilmot, bless her little cotton socks, will get up on her hind legs and will go, no, 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 they've got to be medicines. I disagree with that totally. So when it comes to the against, her hand's going to go up automatically no matter what. What I'm hoping is that there are more MEPs like our friend in the Wirral, like uh, Nicky Sinclair, like Martin Callanan, like Rebecca Taylor, and like quite a few others, it would appear. Chris Davis still want his babies. And Sarah Ratfinks, I'll have to ask the wife, but you never know you look. Um, <laughs> on a dark night, in an alley with no lights on. Where was I? I shouldn't have referred to that. Um, <laughs> if there are enough uh, MEPs with the willingness to see the jury amendment go through, it's gone. At which point in time there is going to be 
one hell of a party because that that'll be it if the jury amendment goes through it's out simple as that if it doesn't and other amendments go through or no matter what happens actually the T tobacco products directive then goes um to plenary so they'll talk about it for a little while um probably a couple of meetings and then they vote on it all then it goes to what's called a plenary session and the normal routine is that there are two plenary sessions but Linda McCavan wants it through before the end of the current parliament so there's only going to be one when it's been there it also goes to the council of ministers and the council of ministers is made up of the likes of Jeremy Hunt and a Subri um, so we need as well to be informing them and that's where Daz comes in on Friday Daz is the vanguard of what's happening because on Friday he's got the MEP in front of him that's why it's really really important that people go to the safer sigs place house premises and speak to Bob Blackwell he's called Bob Walters Bob Walters I know, sorry about that Bob Walters go and speak to Bob Walters tell him your story have a nap with him let him have a try treat him for a cup of coffee tell him what it's all about tell him why we kind of we need representation because if it goes to the council of ministers and the council of ministers sit there and they go hang on a minute this AC things do you not think you've gone a little bit too far lads um, we'd kind of like it not to be there for the simple reason the house of lords said it didn't ought to be there we think it didn't ought to be there go away and think again go on tiddle off there's good little MEPs and they can go away and then they'll discuss it again and they've got to decide both houses have got to agree and it's only when they both agree that something gets enacted so the more noise we make at home and in Europe the better things are going to be and I'm going to go to adverts now but I want to see whether or not we're going to get any calls if we don't it, it's not vital you know I'm not too worried by it but I would love to see if we can get some calls in I want to hear what people have got to say and I see Jeff has already sent the message so Jeff I've accepted your request and when we come back after the break you'll be the first one up we'll be back in ooh two shakes of a donkey's tail back in the room jeff i'm busily calling you here but you ain't picking up he's just typed into chat that it won't let him answer <laughs> he's having problems getting it to answer it won't let him answer no oh, no um, well look i tell you what i've added you jeff so you call me and i've taken do not disturb off so we'll hear when it comes in because jeff wants to join in you call me jeff at vt talk two what's on the bottom of the screen long there i can't reach over that bit there I'll not reach too far down there yes if we all point down there we all join hands and try and contact Jeff <laughs> I'll give him another try I'll, I'll show everybody what's happening actually if I can oh hello 
Right, while we're waiting for that, let's have Brian. I'll accept Brian, and I'm going to call you now, Brian, Brian 2K. Okay, let's see where we get. It's ringing. Can we all hear it ringing? We can. Hello, Brian. Hello, why come? There's a lot of noise on that line. And there, actually, we have Brian in video. Can you hear me okay, Brian? Yeah, I can hear you fine, mate. Lovely. Your microphone's a little bit weak. In fact, we've got a lot of background hum coming through. Is that better? It's still a bit hummy, but go with it. We'll, we'll make out what you're saying. What can we do for it? I think your mic's not plugged in, Brian. We're picking up a rotten noise here. Right, there we go. That was that was a terrible, shocking noise. Let's go back and try Jeff again. Jeff says he's doing a restart because he says Windows 8 wouldn't let him answer. Oh, not Windows 8. That's shocking. That is terrible. Anybody Windows. else? Windows. 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 Yes. <laughs> hands up. Hands up if you're a Mac person. I'm kind of. <laughs> Oh dear, I'm, I, I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm, put your hands down now, Sav. I'm normally well, like having well, my hands up. Right, hang on, what's Brian saying? Brian's typing. Not going to work, it's goosed, he's telling me. He says it's not going to work, he's Mike's goosed. Oh, well, never oh, mind, yeah. never mind. When Jeff's ready, Jeff, call us straight in. Uh, a call in. Um, have we got anything from chat, chat, in the meantime? Um, I'll go back to some of the stuff that I got earlier. Uh -huh. Um Regarding the workshop, Winter Rogue was asking, is Dr. Farisalinos going to the workshop? Has he been invited to win up? No. The, no. the list of participants is as we ran through earlier on. That's it. Uh, apparently, it's not massively unusual for there to be workshops um, done at speed like this. It does happen quite a lot. Um, apparently, the... the to be fair, I suppose we've got to say that the constituency week was arranged long, long before the Tobacco Products Directive. It's been on the calendar for donkey's ages. And May Day is May Day is May Day. Um, and because of, of this urgency that they see to rush the Tobacco Products Directive through during the course of this Parliament, which is, I think has got a lot to do with Darlygate, the kind of want to get it through because of Darlygate or in spite of Darlygate, whichever one. Um, they're kind of putting it on a fast track. And so the, McCavan is trying to stick to this deadline. T to be fair to her, I, don't, I honestly don't think she's an unreasonable woman, particularly. I think she's got the wrong facts. I think her opinions are wrong. But I don't think she's unreasonable. And she does have a reputation for being very quick to get legislation through. And as somebody pointed out to me, if it was legislation I agreed with, I wouldn't be complaining about the speed. So it's kind of a fair comment, isn't it, really? I mean, what, what do you make of the speed of it all, Daz? Does it not seem a bit kind of quick to you? I think th there's a reason behind the speed. And I think she's, she's not expected the opposition that she's currently getting from, from all of us. I think... Um, She's tried to get this in fast, under the carpet, under the radar kind of thing, to, to, get, to get it in and get it done. Um, what she didn't anticipate was um, the voices from all of us lot and the campaigns that are going on. I don't think she expected, um, she probably expected some opposition, but not to the magnitude that she's currently receiving. Oh, or going to get. I, I tell you what, I think, um, I think it's safe to say that the MEPs just weren't expecting the volume of emails and letters that they've had. And these, these are physical letters as well as anything else. And when you see that there are politicians of, of, of it has to be said, mostly right of centre, that are going to the newspapers and saying, hey, this is happening and it needs, you know, we need to get something done about it. Um, it, does, it does seem to me that a lot of this has come because of the people out there, because of you lot. You know, it's not down to me, it's not down to Daz and Sav and, 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 and what have you. It's everybody out there that's doing what they're doing. I mean, I sit and watch Twitter, um, and I've got to be honest, I, me, me, me chest keeps on swelling with pride when I say all these electronic cigarette users, vapors, call them, it doesn't matter what you call them, but they're all sitting there and they're all 
making a noise, making waves about ACIGs and, and trying to engage um, with MEPs. It's even more interesting that the outreach officer for the EU um, has begun to engage with one or two of us because I think possibly because he's seen that MEPs aren't and perhaps there might be something said there to get MEPs engaging um, as much as they possibly can. I certainly hope so. Um, and this is all great stuff, this. I'm not quite sure what's happening with this software. I'm really not. Um, as a business does, if it goes through as is, what's it going to mean to say for six? It means we have to restructure. We have, we have to... Um, obviously, we have to apply to the rules that that that, that will govern us but we, we just have to restructure safer six will still be safer six um how long for i don't know um it will it will impact business greatly as you could well imagine it's it's going to be um quite an impact but i still have this very strong feeling and i've had this feeling for quite some time that if, if we take this to extra time we win it's as simple as that if um if we can postpone this and get get them to go away and do their the checks and all the stuff that they're going to do, then that time. I mean, if you look at what we've achieved so far in, in in the amount of time that we've we've been campaigning, if you multiply that by the amount of time that it will take them to go away and do all these checks, they are not going to have a leg to stand on. So if we take this to extra time, as far as I'm concerned, we win. Um, I have every confidence in that. I, I think you're probably right. I'm going to bring in somebody that uh, has talked a lot about this. Hiya, Dev. Hello, Dave. How are you doing? We've got Dev Kitson dialing in from Switzerland. I am, indeed. And I'll I'm tell done. you, you've got a lovely connection, Bonnie lad. Well, I was just going to say, on a dodgy hotel Wi-Fi connection, but uh, it seems to be working for the moment, so that's well, good. It's, it's, definitely, <laughs> it's definitely doing better than, uh, than the ATM software at the minute. It looks as though actually the, the switch has crashed, but, but that's fine. We can hear you perfectly well. We just can't see you. That's um, probably a good thing. Have you been watching the show? I have, up until about five minutes ago when I thought, because uh, I'm on an iPad. So, ah, right. <laughs> so I had to stop watching to, to, to get Skype going. <laughs> Indeed. Um, first off, just, just while you're there, very kind of quickly, um, with what's going on down with Daz, any, any thoughts on, on uh, the MP turning up at Safer 6? I think it's, I think it's really good. Um, if you recall, I went to see my M M MP, so I say, uh, back in February, I think it was, mm -hmm. and um, and you know I got to see him, but uh, he just didn't seem very interested at all. But uh, I, I think uh, if the guy's showing an interest, he obviously wants to hear. Yes, I would agree. And uh, I really wish I could make it down there on Friday. To be honest with you. <laughs> that, that, makes, that makes two of us. I would love to be there uh, and but shake the man I, by the hand for going. I'd, I'd just echo what yourself and Daz have been saying, and that is if you can get down there, get down there. Uh, you don't get this opportunity too often. I, I would say you're right as well. I'm, at the moment, Dave, you probably have gathered because you'll be seeing the video and you'll be seeing that I'm holding you up to the camera. It's the only way I can get you in. <laughs> Excellent. Which, Funny. If a round like this, will it help? <laughs> it just it'll put me out of balance is exactly what it'll do. But everybody can see that I've got you coming in and in video there. Sav, have we got anything coming in from chat? We've got loads of stuff coming in from chat. Um, I've had one a message that just came in just before there from Funny Tricks Day was saying, um, Dave, I know that we're all helping, but this show is the show that got us all motivated, so a big thanks for that. Um, Mark Shaw has said... Regarding Linda McCavin, she knows how to play the game, in my opinion, and I have suspicion that her recent softening is a ploy. I, I, I completely agree. I, I used the term political manoeuvring the other day, and, uh, you know, she knows what she wants, and she knows the best way to try and get it. Um, I am not shocked in the slightest at the line-up for this workshop on the 7th. Oh, no. Not the only thing that I am slightly surprised about is that the German uh, uh, forum guys have managed to get in, uh, and but that's in no small part due to the NV chair, who who seems to be sympathetic. 
Uh, I don't think we ever stood a chance, to be honest. And I, th I think we should exploit this as much as we can before the 7th. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, the whole notion of, of sending the videos as a, as a kind of a, here's the first salvo and the second salvo is going to happen yeah. over the evening of Bank Holiday Monday if it doesn't happen on Saturday, well, it needs to happen again on the Monday if it does happen on, the sa on Saturday. Andy Sutton, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Talk about designing his show for him. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've got to really, really step the pressure up. We've got to be polite. We've well, got to I'll be... certainly be devoting time to this on Sunday. There's no doubt about that. I, 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 even though it's kind of the, what I expected, I'm still infuriated by it, frankly. Mm. Yes, I mean, had, had there been representation, if Clive Bates had been there, if Jerry Stimson had been there, who offered his services, yeah. if uh, Jacques Uzek had been there, if Farsalinos had been there, if Siegel had been there, if, if any of the luminaries, John Britton had been, any of the, if any of the people that really know what they're talking about had been invited to go along and speak, I would have been nowhere near as kind of grrr as I am now. And, yeah. you know, I wouldn't have felt the need to sit down and put that video together. Um, but as it stands, I think we've got to do everything we can to make our voices heard and, and I'm dead pleased to hear that you're going to be covering it as well, Dave, because I think Sunday night's probably going to be a really good night to start sparking this stuff up. And I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm home on Friday and uh, we, can, uh, we can touch base and, and figure out how we, uh, how we react to it. But uh, it, it is an absolute disgrace. I mean, we, we know what the WHO are going to say. Yes. Because they're so predictable, it's laughable. Mm -hmm. um, and we also know who pays for them. So Indeed. we're not going to get any support there. No. Um, and the European Respiratory Society, the, the stuff that they've put out so far, I mean, how they could be taken seriously as a scientific organisation just astounds me. Um, but they've clearly been cherry-picked by uh, McAvan. Um, it, was, it was put out to Pochkalanga to bring together the people that would do the best hatchet job possible, and she... You know, yeah. out, outside of uh, Jean-Francois Etier and, uh, and the German users, you know, she's done a pretty good job. She couldn't have got any bigger guns. Although, what I'm hearing is the MHRA is going to be quite supportive. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm suspicious of their motives. Um, but I think, actually, the MHRA uh, and, indeed, the, uh, the, the, the British government, when the ministers get to have their say... Um, are going to try and shoot it down a bit. Yes, well, but again, Lord's... you never know whether that's just particular, whether it's just political sort of angling. Well, of course, or whether they'll trade it for something. The vanguard, <laughs> our vanguard, our 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 uh, what's the the reconnoitering party is sitting in the thirty-two inch monitor. Daz has got the first. It's the first salvo fire on Friday, isn't it, Daz? Yep, <clears throat> yep. We'll be, we'll be throwing a few stones there. In that general direction. There you go. So, as, as we said earlier <coughs> on, if you're within spitting distance of Safer Six premises, and, and spitting distance is at 120, 150 miles, it's no distance. Get in your car, get down there. Get in your car, get down there, and get the talk to the MP telling your story. This is the first salvo because we need the UK Parliament on side as well. And I think it's brilliant that you've, uh, that you've got this set up. Nicely written press release as well, I thought, does. It was a superbly written press release. I was I was quite impressed with that, Dave. <laughs> it's very good. You, you, for somebody who says he's not very good at the written word, I think he uh, he underestimates himself somewhat. <laughs> Give it all the secrets <coughs> away. Um, but the beauty of this, of course, is none, none, none of what goes on on Friday is scripted. When people come, it's all speaking from the heart. It's, it's, it's them telling this MP how they feel, what they want him to do. Because bear in mind that the, the main point of fact is he works for us, so let's get him to do some serious work for us on our behalf and just tell it from the heart. And you, you, you can't go wrong with you. Just tell him exactly how you feel. And you, he's going to go away. He's going to go away. His head's going to be filled with so much information. But hopefully a lot of good is going to come from it, a lot of good. I think it will, and I'm, I'm, I'm dead pleased it's happening. But we've run out of time. We have actually run out of time again. An hour has flown past. 
Um, I'm going to say thank you to Daz for coming along and joining us. Thank you to Sav for doing a wonderful job she always does. And all the backroom boys and girls uh, back at VT Towers. And Dave Kitson from coming in from Switzerland. That must be the world's most expensive internet as well. Uh, actually, it's free. Oh, in that case, it's the world's cheapest internet. So that's good. You can never complain about that. <laughs> Um, if we didn't get you in, we, we tried to get a couple of people in, it didn't work this time. We're going to keep on doing this until we can make it work absolutely seamlessly. But until we all see you next time, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow night on the Hayes Hour. But from all of us here, from all over the world, from Switzerland, from uh, down on the south coast, where it's probably two top coats warmer, from North Shales and from here in Herton, from all of us, thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you next time. Cheers. Ta-da. Bye-bye. <laughs>